Thank you um, for today's event. Uh, and I uh, just want to welcome everybody for the fifth day of this World FinTech Festival. And um, today we will be talking about the talent development, upskilling, and reskilling um, for the digital and financial workforce. And so, uh, with that said, um, uh, I'll start introducing the guests um, briefly. Uh, so first, um, I have here with me uh, at the studio, uh, Chika Makova from uh, 500 Startups. And then also virtually online, we have His Excellency Chan Mehta, uh, uh, Secretary of State of MPTC, and uh, Mr. Wu Ti Hong from Prudential, and Natalie uh, Rod Rodion Nova, uh, from STEP Academy, Nikki Enriquez from um, Cellcard, and Joseph Teller from Data U. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to have the panelists to introduce themselves uh, briefly, and also kind of uh, tell us a bit what you're doing within your organization about upskilling and reskilling um, your workforce. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll start off with Chika here, who's with me. Sorry, I need to make it work. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Yitka, and I'm the program lead for 500 Startups. Uh, and for those of you who don't know 500 Startups, we are a basic global venture capital firm, uh, very active early investors. Uh, we have invested in over 240 startups. Many of those are in Southeast Asia, and I'm very happy to say we also have two investments in Cambodia. And uh, one of the things that most people don't know about 500 Startups is that we also spend huge amounts of time and energy in building local ecosystems in the regions where we work. Uh, and so in October 2020, uh, we have launched a program in Cambodia called 500, uh, Anko 500, which is basically its aim is to build capacity in uh, local technology ecosystems and invest time and energy in, in kind of building capacity of Cambodian founders. Thank, uh, thank you, Kikra. Um, how about we go to uh, His Excellency uh, Jan Mehta Khan. Uh, please tell, bit, tell us a bit about you and also what you're also doing. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Jan Mehta Khan, I'm Secretary of State of the uh, Ministry of Post and Telecommunications since 2013. And mostly we have done uh, you know, many, many tasks and the, um, many jobs related to, as I'm in charge uh, before, in, I'm in charge of Liptic, we have the, our own National Institute of Telecom and ICT. And also we have the, uh, our own fund, CBRD fund, capacity building research and development fund, uh, which focus on how we uh, build the uh, infrastructure ecosystem for startup for young entrepreneurs for uh, mobilizing the young talents and the uh, keep them you know building that work between the uh, startup and um, SMEs and also we developing the r and uh, research and development. Okay, yep. thank you. Thank you. This is all. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Chan Mehta. Um, how about Mr. Vuti? Uh, please introduce yourself and tell me, uh, tell us a bit about what you're also doing within your organization. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, Vuti uh, Hong. Uh, I'm managing the marketing uh, function here as well as the partnership distribution. So one of the sort of sales channels. So we are a live insurance company, uh, the largest one in Cambodia. Um, so yeah, so that's my role. So working to promote the educational awareness of the importance and relevance of life insurance uh, for Cambodian families, uh, and at the same time uh, working with a strategic uh, partner, Akrida Bank, to uh, uh, bring that awareness closer to, uh, to the customer. And uh, for those individuals who um, who are in need, uh, we offer the uh, solution to them. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Vuti. Um, Natalie, uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here today at this panel. I am originally from Latvia, but in 2015, I moved to Cambodia 
to head and run operations of a newly established training center, IT Academy Step, and we are specializing in digital skills development. We have programs in software development, design, we have programs in digital marketing, and so on. And in 2019, when observing a dramatic underrepresentation of female students in the field of technology, I have founded a non-profit educational program, the first female coding club in Cambodia, Sisters of Code, which has received very important international awards this year, and we are very proud of that. Besides that, we have been organizing different uh, educational activities, such as Hour of Code, STEM Hub, ICT boot camps, both in Phnom Penh and in uh, CNRI. And uh, I'm very happy to be here on the panel today to share more uh, insights on the market and talents. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, how about you, Nikki? Uh, go ahead and tell us a bit about yourself and what you're also doing at Cellcard. Hi, everyone. So, Mripsu. Um, Nikki Enriquez, Chief People Officer of the Royal Group of Companies, um, arguably the most agile and transformational organization conglomerate in the kingdom. Uh, but today, I will be representing Cellcard, Cambodia's fastest mobile operator. I'm looking forward to telling you about all the exciting things we're doing to be fully ready for 5G. And glad to see everybody on the panel here. Thank you, Nikki. And Joseph, uh, tell us a bit about what you're also doing at DataU there. Sure, thanks, Chenda. Jomripso, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Joseph Telfer. I'm a managing partner of Mekong Big Data and one of the founders and directors at DataU Academy. Um, within our consulting group, we work with uh, banks, fintechs, telcos, internet service providers, uh, FMCG. And uh, in 2019, we identified a, a real um, market need for specialized data skills, uh, data engineering, data science, digital marketing, um, from the perspective of, of kind of uh, funnel dynamics. Um, um, and so we established a, a, an academy here, and we're very fortunate to work closely with the Royal Group and with Nikki. Um, um, and what we're doing is uh, transforming the lives of young Cambodians by uh, intensive training programs that um, uh, facilitate their entry into the data professional sector. Um, and we're working with high street banks to develop financial mechanisms to make that possible. Um, and at the same time, strategically supporting the development of the market um, so that there are great jobs for young Cambodians to move into um, that also have, have really important impacts on the efficiency of the Cambodian um, commercial sector in general. Um, and more recently, we've started uh, collaborating more closely with the government to assist the government um, in their digital transformation, particularly from a, a data perspective, but also looking at uh, digital skills and digital project management. Uh, okay, thank you, Joseph. Um, before we get going here, I just want to uh, talk briefly a bit about what it means by upskilling. So, by definition, upskilling is the process of learning new skills or teaching people new skills. Uh, Reskilling, on the other hand, is the process of learning new skills so you can learn a different job or training people to do a different job. Uh, so, so with that said, I, I, I know the uh, uh, first question would be to uh, His Excellency. Uh, sorry, it's really hard to talk under this visor thing here. Uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Jan Mehta, um, uh, during this year, we were going to be doing uh, Digital Cambodia with uh, the theme was uh, Digital Talent. And, and the focus, and uh, before, you've always been a, a big supporter of digital uh, uh, talent development in Cambodia. Uh, you have a lot of different initiatives through the CBDR fund and, and also helping the community as a whole uh, to teach them, to educate them, and, and train them about building uh, startups and, and many other things. So with that, 2020 is actually coming to an end. Uh, from the national level or within your organization, 
What are some of the things we should look forward to 2021 in terms of uh, upscaling and rescaling uh, the workforce? Thank you, Bang. Thank you for the question. Uh, you may know that the um, we uh, since the last year we have been focusing already for for 2020 about the how we mobilizing and how we you know uh, working uh, priority on the uh, on the talent. And then by the time being, we don't know at that time you know we, we do not know that there is the COVID is coming. Uh, and then the uh, we need to focus. Uh, we need to, you know, to work on the, the scope of the uh, of our scheme. By as you have said that the uh, upscaling and reskilling is becoming more and more important for, in particular, not only for students, the high school students, for university students, but also for MSMEs, and of course for startup and the. Uh, you know, digital startup and technology startup as a whole. But the uh, the point is, you know, the, when we start to focus on talent, last year we have been, you know, follow up the uh, following up the digital Cambodia 2015, uh, sorry, 2019. We uh, come up with the uh, with the new uh, assessment that. We may need uh, to know exactly what we are standing, uh, where we are standing in the ASEAN, you know, in the region and ourselves in terms of uh, where we are going to be in 2030 for our youth, for our next generations. So we, and then we, um, we came up with the proposal, which is called, we are preparing actually digital skill assessment. Digital skill assessment has been approved by uh, CBOD fund board and the capacity building or the fund board uh, in October last year. And the uh, project, the assessment has been conducted by uh, CDI and our National Institute of Telecom and ICT actually. And the whole year, I think the, um, the whole 2020, the work uh, uh, has been done uh, mostly on the survey side in terms of the, uh, the the student side and also the business side. And I can show you that, uh, I mean, it is only the uh, preliminary report uh, we got from the uh, CDOI and NIPTIC. Uh, it's still challenging for us. It's still very critical for us uh, for getting data from, you know, from the, from student side and what they wish and from business side as well, what the 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 would transform themselves uh, to be able to adapt to the new uh, era of the uh, of digital transformation, in particular during the COVID nineteen. So uh, we we may see that you know the the digital skill is still is still looking behind from the uh, from the other skills. I think uh, Natalia or I mean other panelists uh, will add uh, to my uh, survey. I mean to to our survey, our team survey regarding we we plan. You know we foc we we plan for when we we prepare the telecom and ICT development policy in 2015. We would like to increase um, the ICT skills by 15 percent. But actually, what data we got today. You know, we we got about only eleven percent. It just means like uh, with the CBRD fund, it which has been implemented since twenty eighteen. Okay, mostly two years, and you know, with other initiative from the MEF, uh, other initiative from the Ministry of Education, initiative from the uh, from Smart, from Cellcar, from the Medphone, you know, from other private sectors, but you know. Uh, we feel like um, digital skill is still is still very critical. So the young generation, they they are not interested in the uh, in choosing the ICT or technology side. But we do hope, you know, we do hope that during the COVID nineteen, everything has changed, has been changed actually. So the the mentality, the culture of students 
the culture of the uh, of the startup, the culture of a new of the, our business, the culture of the uh, our you know the whole ecosystem has been changed. So taking into account the ICT or the other side as the uh, as the a part of the uh, of the productivity, the effectiveness in particular when we use technology without skill, it is very critical. So they may need that. They may need people. They may need uh, resources. You know, we, we um, two weeks ago we are uh, organizing uh, jointly with the uh, Young Entrepreneur Association of Cambodia. We conducting the uh, survey, what is it called, digital adoption for SMEs in Cambodia during COVID-19, and uh, in particular, we have another survey. I mean, conducted by UNSCAP recently. Uh, I mean, the, on 9 December, they have shown the same challenge for our MSME to be or to go digital. Digital still is very, very critical for not only for I mean for MSME to, to go digital to be transform themselves uh, to digital, but they have also to use you know digital technology, digital solution. <laughs> they have to change. Uh, the survey we got is about the uh, it's about the culture. So they they, they know that 2021 they have to change their culture. They have to change their mentality. They have to invest in people. They have to invest in digital skill. I think it's a very good message that uh, we have been we have been uh, uh, publishing. I think I don't know if uh, in nationwide or not, but at least uh, it would impact you know give the impact to the youth that the student high school may know that digital technology will be. Uh, uh, very critical, and they may, you know, they may from 2021, they may choose ICT majors, ICT skill, or technology skill, or STEM to be part of their career or their orientation in the future. So, I mean, uh, this is what we uh, what we thought, and once we finish the uh, assessment, this is the assessment will be finished by during the COVID. You know, we have the uh, about four months delay. So it will be finished by April next year. By then, we are going to for develop, uh, which is called Digital Skill Development Framework or Digital Skill Development Roadmap, for them to make sure that they will choose the right, uh, the right major, the right job. Hey, they will take the right opportunity, very good opportunity for the next five years and the next ten years. This is what I could share, you know, the uh, regarding. I, I cannot say anything yet about about how we are going to upskill or reskill because we are under the uh, survey, you know, preparation. But right after that, uh, I gotta share with you more about the uh, about how we are going to develop as a strategy for digital skill upscaling or rescaling for our use in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Um, so, uh, Natalie, uh, uh, with what uh, uh, Chen Mehta just mentioned, is, is about rescaling, upscaling, um, and, and also they have uh, an extensive roadmap in, in, in building um, you know the the capacity for uh, the youth today, and I know you were with uh, uh, Step Academy. Uh, my question for you would be: uh, Do you see a lot of people coming into your academy in terms of learning something and then actually change to want to learn something different because they see a different type of you know job that they may like? Do you, I mean uh, from from your perspective? Uh, do you see that that change, or do they just want to learn more about um, the different digital skills that's available? Or the, the other part as well is that do you also see an increase of of people wanting to learn, um, you know, more on the STEM side? Thanks for the question. Well, um, I've I've been in Cambodia for five years, and uh, I definitely see an increase. Uh, in interest uh, learning technology. 
uh, the data that I've seen from the Minister of Education Youth and Sport was saying that it's around, uh, like I think it was eight percent of students uh, choosing uh, technology to study in um, in the universities, and the majority would still decide to study uh, business and banking. Um, and I can uh, kind of explain this uh, situation by a strong uh, influence uh, from the parents on the decision on, of the children what to study. And technology is not uh, kind of a strength for uh, the, uh, the, 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 the older generation, I would say, right? Uh, but uh, I am definitely observing a, a, a changing, a positive trend in, um, in, uh, in this decision to study technology. And I see that uh, young people uh, are also uh, kind of finding uh, these opportunities uh, through uh, available in the market. And this is where private sector involvement is so important to highlight what are the jobs there, what kind of requirements are there, and uh, what kind of salaries are there. Because I don't see that if I would compare it to Europe or US, it's not visible yet. We definitely need more help in in kind of highlighting uh, attractiveness of um, of the industry, uh, and uh, we we should admit, like whatever industry you choose, having strong digital skills is key. You can go to work for a bank, or you decide to be uh, persuade your business, maybe start a business in agriculture, which is amazing. But if you don't have digital skills, you will be actually lacking a lot of competitiveness and this is why I would say computer science and technology programs should be implemented quite early starting from even primary schools and and be uh, a part of the curriculum in any area. Uh, from IT Academy step, um, uh, data an example we see a number of people who are coming for reskilling uh, that you've mentioned, uh, for example, uh, people coming from um, like a bank, uh, a financial sector, but they want to learn software development because they see a need or for or they see opportunities for them to grow. Or we would see, for example, like we have some examples of uh, medical students uh, who were forced kind of by parents to study uh, medicine, but they are designers in the heart and they want to learn 3D modeling and, uh, and animation, which is fine. Like, it's normal thing happening like when young people are trying to find what works for them and what not. Uh, I also one one important thing I want to mention if we are talking about um, upskilling and reskilling. I think Cambodia has to focus on actually uh, providing access to quality uh, education uh, across um, like every touch point. And uh, because, as you know, like AI development, data science development, it's not enough to have basic skills. You kind of have to get a little bit higher in your skills uh, to solve complex problems. To be able to do that, you have to have strong foundation. And uh, we kind of see uh, definitely a, a lot of activities from the Ministry of Education uh, trying to improve uh, STEM subjects delivery. But uh, we have to admit there are a lot of challenges as well, especially with COVID uh, pandemic that uh, put all the educational institutions kind of on online e-learning uh, uh, situation and it's not always uh, been um, efficient. So, yeah, like to answer your question, just to summarize, I would say uh, that uh, there is a trend of growing interest uh, for the uh, uh, digital skills development among youth. We still see quite strong impact from the parent side, uh, not really understanding what kind of careers are there and, and they would not really be supporting the kids. And this is where we would love to see more engagement from the private sector to kind of create an environment of trust, um, excitement, and show the opportunities what are there within this sector. Yeah, thank you. Th thank you, Nat Natalie. Um, 
Now, uh, speaking of, of uh, upscaling and rescaling, I, I think uh, this question is for Nikki. Uh, Cellcart will have their 5G very soon. I've seen it all on the news. Um, you know, we're still, I'm, I'm still using uh, or, or benefiting from the 4G itself. And so now with 5G, I, I assume that we'll have uh, much, uh, a, a lot of data that we're going to be consuming. But from your company within Cellcart, um, how is SoCard upskilling and reskilling its current workforce to be able to adapt to the changing digital environment? Uh, meaning as well uh, in terms of, uh, did you also from, from only, not only from the, the digital environment in terms of how people consume data, but also from the infrastructure side, how are you training or upskilling your existing workforce to be able to support the 5G infrastructure? Thank you. Very good question. Um, we actually started our digital transformation journey a few years back, uh, maybe three, four years ago. It was quite important for us to be able to enable our people to participate in a lot of the interesting things that the company had on the roadmap. Um, we went first from a digital approach to mobile approach in the way that we do our work. And um, from there, we find ourselves today very much connected to our apps and our devices um, uh, as we go through our day's work. The upskilling element of the journey was not that uh, difficult. It wasn't the most um, challenging, I have to say. Our engineers, they were quite happy to go through the 5G certifications, trainings on cloud-based technologies, uh, digital security, and, and a lot more relevant programs uh, that we need to fully be ready for 5G. Um, Cellcard is a very mobile and software-centric workplace. And our people simply had to had to move with the times, we, we had to adjust and adjust quickly. Um, I have to say I'm so proud of our employee wellness team. We have a company doctor, his name is Dr. Saraksa, he's been, he's been with us for years. And um, imagine starting 20 years ago with this large blue logbook, the ledger, you know, charting um, employee health and safety. And moving, moving to Microsoft Excel over the years, and today, Dr. Saraksa and, and our nurses, they're working on Microsoft Teams. Uh, they're doing polls. They're um, reporting on Power BI, and they're actually in the conversation on health and safety analytics. So, to Natalie's point and and Vuti as well er earlier that. Um, it's quite important that there's a cross-functional um, sort of development. It's not only for IT. Digital transformation is, is for everybody. And um, this is a case in point for the employee wellness team. And, you know, when you have people as senior as Dr. Saraksa and you see them so committed to upskilling and um, you know they they run with you on the digital marathon. You just know you're you're in a good company. Well, thank thank you, Nick, thank you, Nikki. So so yes, of course, a, a lot of company has to constantly uh, adjust. Or you know, like in, in the startup world, we like to be agile. Uh, so my question to Mr. Woody would be. Um, you know, I, I, I went to the Potential website, look at your, your, some of the core values you have there. One of the things you put in there was innovate and create opportunities. So how do you encourage your workforce to, to, to innovate or to think outside of the box? Um, and, and what is that culture like within your workforce there at Potential? Okay, thank, thank you for the question. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, to us here, you know, I mean, selling live insurance is, is probably not the, you know, the most fun part, um, you know, of, any, of anything, right? Um, so I guess, you know, the first point that uh, organizationally we, we do is, to have, is try to have fun. I think this reskilling and upskilling, I think, start with people, start with human beings. 
and this human being is us as a staff, uh, you know, uh, in every room and our customer. So I think that's sort of where we started. Um, I think our sort of staff and ourselves, you know, our ability to to innovate um, really pretty much rests on our understanding of what our customer needs and uh, and how our customer needs are changing. Um, because most of the time, you know, when we talk about reskilling and upskilling, uh, it just takes a changing uh, and understanding that we, we ourselves just need to move along with our customer and, and just that alone uh, you know, can be sufficient in a particular period of time to address a particular sort of customer need, right? So I guess for us, uh, organizational, uh, sort of in, in terms of our organization, we are going through the changes uh, sort of ourselves. You know, um, you know uh, potential is big in pause, and pause is, is really where you know our future uh, is going is to be able to deliver you know um, you know all our solution uh, on mobile uh, and in ways that the customer like uh, you know at any time anywhere. Um, so you know uh, you know how we sort of reorganize ourselves internally is a process, and I think you know we. We're happy that you know we're on that journey, but I think I just want to stress again. The, uh, I mean, the starting point is to ask less, fewer questions, allowing you know uh, you know our team to just get on with it, uh, you know, and, and learn from it, uh, and, and just build that support. You know, at times we ask more questions than we should. I think we took some reflection, and uh, you know, and, and we we try to sort of to do less of those, and allowing our younger, um, sort of younger team. To do what they need to do, you know, we have plenty of example here where you know we have certified, you know, fully qualified ACCA, you know, uh, an accountant who's pretty much a bookworm type, right, and who is now leading, you know, the Pulse team. You know, there's nothing accounting in that thing at all. You know, it's just about mobile, you know, health, wellness, uh, how to deliver a solution, you know, uh, in a way that the customer enjoys, right. Um, so this is some of the example, but I think fun. Uh, ability to connect with our customers, understanding their needs, and just you know improve you know our social and, and uh, sort of emo uh, emotional awareness. Um, I think that's the basis of how we uh, promote our innovation in our company. Okay, great, great. So so just let them have fun and let them go at it, right? So uh, that's 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 a pretty cool environment to work in. So Jika, you you're with 500 startups, and I assume you just basically promote a lot of the fun things in, in terms of building startups. So uh, what are some of the things uh, you look forward to doing in Cambodia to help uh, develop young talents here, and and maybe potentially building, you know, uh, bigger, better, not better, but bigger startups or or uh, more startups. Uh, yeah. Uh I love the fact that my job is fun. Uh, I would say in the last two months, it has been very much kind of 100% building our Cambodian operations. Um, and, you know, Anchor 500, it's, it's very unusual uh, in itself because it's a partnership with my enterprise uh, and it's a long-term investment in building the Cambodian ecosystem. So it's a two, two and a half years project. So... We, we have kind of huge amounts of work ahead of us. There are, uh, it's, it's a very comprehensive program. So it kind of offers opportunities for founders in terms of addition stage, in terms of business activations, and helping all the way to kind of investment readiness. Because fundamentally, we all want to see more investment in Cambodian technology startups, more money going into the, the best of the best uh, of the startups in Cambodia. So there is... In, in itself, it's a huge education program, if you look at that, because we provide uh, capacity building, you know, the, the kind of technical expertise, business expertise. But I think what's really important for me, it's, it's also realizing that very often what my colleagues would say when I speak to the investors is, you know, yeah, they're kind of good, but they're missing some key skills in terms of the, in terms of the founding teams. And... What I hear very often, it's a lack of leadership, um, lack, lack of grit, you know, the, the kind of ability to push through hard times, a lack of critical thinking, um, that maybe are not the thing that you learn in a classroom space, but those are really crucial for success of any startup in Cambodia. Um, and even though Anchor 500, it's, it's relatively young in Cambodia, I've been here for five and a half years. I've worked with some of the uh, some of the university students building their capacity and leadership. 
Um, and I can see that being one of the, the huge obstacles for the technology world to move forward. It's, it's a combination of technical skills, business skills, and those really important kind of leadership and grit that helps them to succeed. Um, and so for us, if it's 500, it, it's really building kind of winning teams. And I think that's the really important thing for us as well, is that very often when we talk to founders, um, they, they're missing some critical team members in terms of the founding team. So very often we find, you know, the computer geek who's very good in terms of the technology, but might be missing on their team somebody who is good at finances and business or has the, you know, don't have the technical skills on their team. On the other hand, we also know lots of founders that really struggle to find uh, co-founders who have a technical background. Um, and I think so for us, it, it's really taking what we do very holistically and making sure that we're supporting them through the core technical skills and business skills, but also helping them to really grow as individuals so they have the skills and ability to lead their startups and able to kind of go through the difficult time. Because I think sometimes I think being a startup founder and you know it yourself, it's not rosy, it's not fun. There are lots of hard times, the difficult situations. And unless people have the resilience, they give up. Or, you know, there are pressures from their families. You know, why are you doing this startup? You can go and work in a bank, you can get a job at NGO and you make, can make more money. Uh, and they're all true, um, but there is some magic ingredients that I think we need to nourish in young people uh, and in those that really want to go and set up technology startup and be successful. Uh, and so for me, this is, this, is the, this is the thing I'm looking forward in terms of 500, to really be here long term to build in, in the capacity, the inner capacity of the, of the startup ecosystem. All right, thank you, Chica. Uh, so it, it looks like we need a whole element of different skills in terms of business skills, leadership skills to uh, technical skills. Um, and through this uh, pandemic, uh, as you know, we um, a surge of uh, online transactions, you know, especially me in the payment world, we, we see a lot of that happening. Um, and we see a lot of uh, businesses uh, starting to uh, transform themselves digitally now. Um, a lot of the banks are talking about, you know, how do we become more digital? A lot of the shops now, how do we go online? And so, and you see people are now ordering online all the time. And, and so, so, which is really, really great to see the, the movement and the progression uh, of this country itself. And, and it's one thing I told people when, when they asked me COVID. For me, is COVID actually accelerated the adoption of technology. Um, with that, um, Joseph, uh, you work with a lot of data as well, and you probably see a lot of things happening. Um, so uh, from your perspective, uh, do we have enough skilled people here in Cambodia to help businesses build digital transformation, whether from, from getting things online to the banks transforming their entire uh, banking practice? Uh, do we have enough skilled workers here? Thanks. Th thanks for the question. Um, no. Uh, in short answer, no, we don't. Um, the, if I look at the question very specifically, do we have enough skilled people? The answer is no. Do we have enough people? The answer is yes. Do those people have a hunger um, for their, their own development and for their own access to the future? Absolutely. One of the one of the key challenges, um, which I think is an opportunity, absolutely, is that our young people in Cambodia um, reach far. They, they want skills and they, they self-learn. One of the issues with that is that you're not getting a great pedigree. And I think uh, Natalia mentioned this earlier as well. If we don't invest in high school, if we don't invest in university programs or fill in the gaps, we end up with young workers in their 20s, early 30s that are motivated and confident to a degree. We can talk more about the confidence issues um, as, as, as you mentioned already. Um, but the, the, the problem is they don't have a good pedigree. So they're not well versed in, in Scrum Agile, in how to run successful digital pro projects, how to measure the efficacy of those projects, 
how to seek out data from their company and their organization to validate their assumptions. Ideas around lean methodology are, are, are lacking. Um, and, I, and, and I just, you know, I, I've got my notes here and, and, and everyone who's spoken today, I agree so much with, with what they've said and they've really highlighted these different, these different problems about this journey that we're on and the need to build um, key skills. But as, as, uh, as I think Natalia said earlier as well, um, all business is digital business. This is something that is really important that we understand and, uh, as a nation and as a, as, uh, in this panel as well. Yes, we're here talking about fintech today in, in particular, but all business is digital business. And those businesses that can run better projects digitally will have a competitive advantage and will grow GDP and will accelerate the transformation of Cambodia to middle income uh, country, which I hope will happen faster than we're projecting. That's that's what our company is invested in and what we what we want to do. But it's important to remember that that even even non digital businesses use digital products to manage their business. And and from from our perspective, when we look at our clients, um, the the ideas of digital transformation really need work, and they need. Um, the, the more esoteric, the more soft skills side of it is equally as important as the hard skills of actually learning the, the tech stack, learning the, the software uh, packages, the, um, uh, the code languages. We need to ensure that we're giving all of this, this surrounding um, uh, area a lot of attention as well. Um, and, and exactly what you could just mentioned as well, critical thinking, big thinking is another one as well. Let's not just get into our, this is enough, I'll just do enough to get by and get by the next year. But, but what about Cambodian businesses that want to expand into the growing ASEAN market, uh, whether that be from the startup perspective or our, or our conglomerates in Cambodia? Um, we have talent and we have growth in our, in our minds, but we need to ensure that our youth understand that the world is bigger than Cambodia and they have talent that can, that can reach outwards and create um, opportunities. That said, there is a big, big gap of B2B problem solving. So actually coming up with products and solutions um, and the skills that go with this to identify and create solutions for B2B. Cambodia has done a very good job of inspiring a generation of entrepreneurs. My fear with that inspiration is that we go very young. We go post-university and we, we restrict those people, therefore, from moving into industry and getting a lot of commercial corporate experience so that they can really see high value opportunities and problems. You know, what we see more of is, is, is an encouragement to look at consumer problems, look at social problems. And so we see another cake app or another delivery service. And what we really need is um, speeding up digital signatures between companies uh, in Cambodia working, facilitating MBC in their movement towards digital signatures, um, digital stamps. You know, these are really important um, uh, barriers to speed in the market, but we never see the, 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 the startup world really addressing any of these because the young people are too focused on, on, on the B2C problems. Um, uh, and as you mentioned as well, you know, there, there are really key ideas, not skills, but ideas, like lean. We've also talked about agile today. Um, uh, Chanda, from your, from your startup, I know that's how you work. You know, test, validate, experiment, improve. Um, and that idea of, of, of you don't have to be right, you just have to improve, it doesn't fit well with the, the mindset that we have. So if we are going to build um, enough skilled people to drive our efficiencies forward. We also have to really, really be careful about how we address the mindsets. And, 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 and Excellency Kanchamata said this as well. Uh, and then I just want to agree with another point um, from Natalia about we must not forget to focus on parents as well. When we talk about skills development, we always create our media. Um, do our campaigns uh, and make sure that our messaging is really great for the youth. But what we're doing is we're ignoring the fact that those youth follow very closely what their parents tell them. And if we haven't created uh, the messages for parents that, 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 that Natalia uh, uh, pointed out very well earlier, then, then that's the top of our funnel for, for getting the numbers that we need. 
And at the moment, there's that parental barrier on top of that funnel, and we need to make sure that that we address that with government spending, with grant spending, and our and us, the commercial uh, corporate sector. We also need to do our part to ensure that that we're addressing the the real contextual problems and not just looking at the uh, looking at the symptoms almost of the of the problem. Thank you. All right, thank you. So uh, we have about five minutes left. So I, I just want to ask one question to all of our panelists here. Um, and really quickly, just, just one minute is fine. So just look at within, uh, again, the, the topic today is really is upskilling and reskilling um, uh, the, the, the workforce itself. So uh, my question is, when is it a good time within your company or organization or within the government uh, when is it a good time to really think about upskilling or reskilling, uh, whether a specific employee or even yourself? Um, uh, when when is a good time to do that? Uh, go ahead, Dr. Jan uh, I'll let you go first. Wow. <laughs> when is a good time? I mean, uh, every time is a good time. When you see the crisis is coming, is a good time. When you see the challenge is coming, is a good time. And when good time is a good opportunity, and how to say it, it, you have to, you have to look at yourself. I mean, if uh, your skill is not the, uh, is not proper, uh, I mean, it's not adoptable for the, uh, for the market, I mean, for the demand, you have to, you have to upskill or you have to reskill yourself. COVID-19, you know, the pandemic, uh, teach you that, uh, you have to, you have to move on, you have to change it, you have to upskill yourself, you have to reskill yourself. Uh, the, the economic era actually is changed. 2021 is changed, you know. Even the government is also the same thing. The, the government officer actually, you know, CAMDEC is coming. CAMDEC is part of digital government as well. Uh, the whole government officer has uh, had to know how the uh, digital tools, the ICT, uh, play a very important role for, the, uh, for providing public services to the citizens, to the businesses. So, I mean, the... Uh, Good time is everyone. I mean, the, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, okay. for business, for youth, for for the government, for everyone. Yeah, okay. this is my uh, uh, quite long, but yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, Nikki. Go ahead. W when is a good time to to really upskill or reskill? I would actually say yesterday. Uh, today would be good too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Wooty. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, but I'll probably go maybe a bit further, maybe last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Nikki? Did you oh, want me not, to say not, yeah. not Nikki, I'm sorry, Natalie. I apologize. Natalie? Um, well, I would say actually upskilling or reskilling is a lifetime journey. We have to change our mindset from thinking that I'm getting this training course and I will secure a happy life forever. No, we are now in the age of reinventing, of being flexible, open-minded, having a growth mindset to observing opportunities, to jumping on them, understanding what kind of strengths and what kind of weaknesses do I have and how can I improve and how can I build on that? So it's a, it's a lifetime journey. So it's like forever. My mom, she's 70 years old. She just recently called me and told me that she has upgraded her health and safety secure certificate uh, for the dangerous uh, uh, goods, which is like amazing. I'm so proud of her. And she would never stop learning. This is what is my message to everyone. You don't forget, never stop learning. That is like a lifetime journey, and this is how uh, we, we can only be uh, successful and competitive. And that is the same message uh, both for students, for employers, for, uh, for governments, to keep uh, investing in education, because that is actually the main strength, knowledge and skills uh, are the main values right now. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Joseph, really quickly, 10 seconds. When is it a good time? Best time is yesterday. Second best time is tomorrow. All right. Thank you. And Chica? 
all the time. All Agree. The, all the time. Well, thank you, everyone, for this discussion. Our time is up. And, and what I got out of all this is that it's never too late to upskill or reskill. And you have to change that mindset because you have to continuously learn and improve yourself. So again, thank you, everybody. And, and thank you for this discussion.